Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast update for the western U.S. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, the satellite picture as the sun comes up on Friday morning illustrates the jet stream flow. We've got a big trough swirling away across the west coast and then a big broad area of high pressure across the eastern two-thirds of the country, keeping things sunny and mild in the east and cloudy and unsettled here across the west. Beneath those clouds, we've got some precipitation spreading in across primarily the Pacific Northwest right now that will have opportunities for precipitation across the entire West as we head through the next week or so. And then as we look at temperatures, warmest off to the South, cooler off to the North, where we've got that cold air starting to work its way in first across the Pacific Northwest. The hazards map from the National Weather Service, we've got a winter storm watch across portions of Montana. We've got a red flag warning across parts of the, uh, the central Rockies into the Cascades across western portions of uh, Utah into eastern California. We've got dense fog advisory in place across parts of the central valley. We've got a winter storm warning in effect across parts of the Sierras. Uh, so a mixed bag here as far as weather conditions. And then we can look at the, uh, the fire weather conditions here across the... Uh, lower 48 over the next two days day one on the top day two on the bottom and again we've got the critical values here across primarily uh, central and southern nevada but also western portions of arizona and utah this is the next seven days of forecast precipitation and again just about everyone getting an opportunity to get some precipitation heaviest across the pacific northwest we've also got this swath of heavy snowfall that'll be coming here as we go through the weekend into early next week but then we do bring in uh, precipitation opportunities down into the Central Valley light, uh, especially over the weekend with uh, more in the way of precipitation possible as we get into week two. So it's kind of a good news, bad news situation as we talk about rainfall in California. Uh, the opportunities are there, uh, but they're kind of backloaded as we talk more about the uh, seven to 14 day time frame than in the one to seven day time frame. Of course, the latest drought monitor, we continue to monitor that. Uh, big areas of expanding extreme and exceptional drought from the four corners all the way into Northern California, portions of Oregon. Again, we've got confidence that we're gonna be eroding that across the Pacific Northwest into parts of Northern California as we head through the next one to two weeks. Now here's the jet stream flow. This is the first leg of this trough that's working its way in right now. This little wave is going to help initiate that winter storm as it lifts off to the northeast from Montana into the Canadian Prairie. And then we've got additional waves that are going to be coming around the base of that trough as well, bringing additional chances for moisture to the west. So this first wave rides down the west coast, bringing opportunities for rain from north to south, snow in the higher elevations. The second wave comes in on the backside. It doesn't really have the right... Um, trajectory to do much in terms of bringing moisture in from the Pacific. Instead, with its more north to south trajectory here, we're going to be bringing some dry air in and pausing the precipitation for 24 to 48 hours uh, with that wave. But then we get another one coming in here. This one will bring some Pacific moisture with it as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we just continue to do the same pattern, bringing these little troughs in along the west coast, dragging them from north to south, uh, bringing Pacific moisture with them. We can see that when we look at the precipitable water plot. I'll go ahead and animate that. You see the first system make its way in. Here's that push of dry air over the Sunday into Monday time frame. But then again, we get these little, little intrusions of Pacific moisture. Now, it, this is not a... Um, this is not an atmospheric river. We're not talking about a, a fire hose being turned on as far as moisture concerned at all. Again, here comes the first system. You see it bringing some Pacific moisture with it as it moves from north to south along the coast. We then see that next wave with the bad trajectory. Here's its Pacific moisture, but then here's the dry air coming from the Rockies as this wave makes its way again to north to south to bring the Pacific moisture uh, inward or inland. We then have a pause, so then we've got a relative lack of deep moisture till we get into late Monday and Tuesday. Here comes the next trough. Now you see this little tongue of moisture coming in from the Pacific, but again, it doesn't park itself in one spot. It just quickly gives a glancing blow, a chance for some uh, precipitation to stack up there before it moves on. Same thing, just keeps repeating as we go into Thursday, as we go into Friday, but then things get a little more interesting. This is getting a little borderline as far as maybe a prolonged surge of Pacific moisture but check it out. We're talking about Saturday, Sunday, November 14th, 15th. 10 days out there, plenty of time for us to uh, sweat out the details on this one. But understand that there continues to be hope out there in the week two time frame. Now let's look at the, uh, the specifics. 
with the operational run of the European model here. This will show us this first wave as it makes, uh, makes its way down the coast. This is things as we get started here Friday morning, taking it into Friday evening. We'll watch this wave again, just continue to ride down the coast as we head through the next 48 hours. This is sunrise Saturday morning now. Starting to bring again just some light moisture into the Central Valley, some snow in the uh, higher elevations. That continues all the way through Saturday night into Sunday morning. We'll keep that snow heavy at times in the higher elevations. Snow moves off to the Four Corners regions as we get into Monday. This is when we see that little intrusion of dry air. Remember with that next little wave that doesn't quite have the right trajectory. Then we get the next wave of moisture that uh, does make its way in here as we get into Monday night and Tuesday, first across the Pacific Northwest, making its way into Northern California, potentially as we get into late Tuesday. This one rings its moisture out as it then makes its way across the Rockies. Then we get another chance here, late Thursday into Friday, another chance here as we get into Friday and Saturday. So uh, it looks like the heaviest moisture really wants to wait till we get to the back half of the coming week here. It just uh, it really, we get glancing blows until we get to around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then maybe we're talking about more substantial precipitation. So from the European Ensemble model, between now and next Friday, November 13th, again, opportunities for quite a bit of precipitation from Northern California up the coast into the Pacific Northwest, into uh, Western Canada. And again, as we talk about areas that are really struggling with the drought, this is one of them, and that would be some beneficial moisture. Of course, Central Valley, some precipitation, but we're talking more like tenths of an inch versus inches. Same thing when we get up here into the Snake River Valley. We're talking more like tenths of an inch to a half an inch of precipitation versus uh, you know significant accumulating snow off to the north from northern Idaho into the Canadian Prairie. Now, as we continue to go through the uh, the next one to two weeks, again, this, this trough wobbles around. It continues to reinvent itself across the west, and that's why we'll continue to keep the chance for some significant precipitation in the forecast as we go through the next one to two weeks across the Pacific Northwest down into uh, northern California. And here it is. So here is on the left, we have got November 6th through the 12th. On the right, we're talking about November 13th through the 19th. And there it is, as we get into the week two time frame, the potential for a, a more extended prolonged period of Pacific moisture making its way in from central and northern California up the coast into the Pacific Northwest. That is something we'll continue to watch some hope there in the week two time frame. We will be talking about some strong winds accompanying some of these systems as they make their way down, primarily across the Rockies. And generally over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's going to be strong southerly winds. And so we saw the, the red flag warnings in this area, the, uh, the critical fire weather values. And again, that's strong winds, low humidity as this next wave makes its way across the Rockies. Cold air is going to be making its way in from northwest to southeast as we head through the weekend. Here's your highs for the day on Friday, Saturday. And then here is Sunday, Monday, and now Tuesday. And then we're talking about Central Valley frost risks. And it does look like Monday and Tuesday, we will have to keep an eye on things. Right now, it's looking like mid-30s for most, flirting with the freezing mark here in some areas, but uh, probably some of the higher elevations here, maybe getting close to 32. So right now, not looking like a hard freeze across the Central Valley, but it does look like some areas could flirt with that freezing mark, both on Monday and and Tuesday morning. Hope you have a great Friday, a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk to you once again on Monday morning.